cancel our March meeting, uh, face-to-face meeting with Jim Simpson, but he is going to be doing this on video. We're going to stream it on Facebook and we'll be putting it on YouTube. He will be speaking about the red-green axis, which is the relationship between socialism or socialists and um, the political part of the Muslim religion. Some, something like 80,000 cases and three, uh, 3,500 deaths approximately. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but there are estimates that their cases could run into the millions, and some have even said the deaths there have run into the millions. We really have no way of knowing what the truth is because the Communist Party withheld the information about that disease for a full month before it finally leaked out thanks to a brave Chinese doctor who was working on it and actually got that disease himself and unfortunately died. But so we really don't know. And then there was this study out of the UK. They estimated hundreds of thousands of deaths. I mean, cataclysmic. And then two days ago, they recanted and said that, well, actually now our estimate is gonna be in the UK anyway, about 20,000 deaths. But even that uh, is suspect because he was so wildly off the first time. Why do we suppose he's not going to be wildly off this time? I've been tracking the numbers uh, for a while. And so, for example, in Maryland, we've gone from 100 or so to now almost 1,000. And in the past four days, the rate has gone from 23% per day to 37% per day on Wednesday or Thursday, then down to 33% growth yesterday and down to 28% growth today. And so we are sitting at 992 cases. If that Uh, rate continues till next Sunday. We'll have over 7,000 cases by next Sunday and 40,000 cases the Sunday after that. But I firmly believe that because we are doing, taking the steps we are to social distance, that the numbers are actually going to be much less than that. And that growth rate is going to continue to slide down. I don't believe that we're going to be able to come out of the cave, so to speak, in two weeks or by uh, Easter, as President Trump has suggested. But I think uh, within a month, if these, if this trend continues, we we hopefully can go back to work. And of course, I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to rest on that. Uh, uh, projection. That's just my personal assessment of it. But in the meantime, while we have all this information and misinformation flying around, we have now gotten a $2.2 trillion deficit busting stimulus package for this coronavirus crisis. Some of the uh, items in that package may be needed. It's hard to know because of the contrary statistics that we have, uh, whether or not it's going to continue long enough for all those dollars to really need to be spent. I certainly hope not. Death rate seems to be staying fairly consistent uh, despite this retraction from the UK study. The statistics seem to be uh, staying relatively consistent over time. In Maryland, uh, the death rate is 0.5%, and around the world in total, it's now 4.6%. Now, in some places like Italy, it's a lot more than that. Italy opened its doors to China in a big way, and hundreds of thousands of Chinese uh, have come in to live and work in Italy. And what is going on in Italy is 
kind of the, the kind of thing we can anticipate or is happening here as well, but not at the same level. Um, about 10% of Italy's businesses have now been taken over by Chinese. And this was a carefully orchestrated effort over time where they first came in as less expensive labor and then Chinese um, entrepreneurs came in and competed with the Italian small businesses. Italian small businesses went out of business or were taken over or were bought out by the Chinese. And so now there's a very strong Chinese presence in Italy. And that's the reason there, the COVID crisis is going wild out there. Here's a good graphic showing what was going on with the adults in the room while the children in Congress were at play. So while the adults were worried about real problems, as with the past three years, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Dutch Rupers Burger and company were obsessed with finding some kind of means to impeach the president. Now, if they could, I think they'd try to impeach him for the coronavirus, but they haven't gone that far yet, but I would not put it past them. And in the meantime, Fox is doing its part by firing uh, Trish Reagan, who yesterday was, who is defending uh, President Trump and talked very loudly about how the Democrats were politicizing the coronavirus. Leave it to Fox to let her go as they let Todd Starnes go. What is the matter with these people? I have no idea. But here are some of the ads the Democrats put in to the $2.2 trillion coronavirus bill. Now this uh, list uh, I received from somebody and I not, have not independently verified that every one of these provisions has gone in the final bill. The ones in yellow uh, have, but I'm not sure about the other ones. I haven't, and I haven't had time to go through. All of them were proposed. And the ones that I think are really outrageous, the 500 million there for elections, early voting, same day voting, voter registration and absolutely. Now think about this. They are so concerned about the coronavirus that they want us to say, hold in place uh, as long as necessary. And yet they want to provide 300 million to public broadcasting. They're the ones who have been trashing Trump, the endowment of the arts, the endowment of the humanities, I love the JFK Center for Performing Arts, although I think it might be 25 million. 25 million boost in the salaries for our lovely, wonderful members of Congress that brought this monstrosity to us. And the one that kills me the most, 350 million for migrant and refugee assistance. They don't need, the State Department does not need a penny more for migrant and refugee assistance. There are only gonna be 18,000 refugees, if that, brought to this country this year. The United Nations, not the State Department, but the United Nations has already suspended the program due to the coronavirus scare. Of course, the State Department continued bringing in refugees right up to that moment. You know, I put a post on my website calling never let a crisis go to waste. And that is exactly what they've done. While President Trump, his advisors, and some Republicans in Congress focused on getting help where it was needed, this was the kind of thing the Democrats were focused on. And, you know, we've watched them play these games for the last three years. But to my mind, if there was any time in the history of our nation when you might start to realize 
just how bad these people are and just how utterly uninterested in our welfare they are and utterly and completely and totally interested in their own advancement and power, it's right now. It's, it's put out in stark relief. And that's something that I want you all to take away from this um, coronavirus briefing because it's simply outrageous. But I have to say that the Republicans, as usual, did a, a miserable job of negotiating this. I don't believe any of this stuff had to be in here. Now, because the Democrats stalled and stalled and stalled and they got enormous pressure. The worst stuff in this list was taken out. Uh, it was all Nancy Pelosi's idea. Uh, she had her own bill proposed, but Chuck Schumer put much of it back in and we didn't, and the Republicans did not fight it hard enough. They just didn't fight it. And then President Trump basically over a barrel uh, because he wanted to get something done, passed it. That's all I'm gonna say about the coronavirus crisis right now.